Hello, my name is Doug Hubble and welcome to Astral Photography Tutorials. We're going to process the cell phone data video that was in part one. If you haven't downloaded this uh, data, you can download it in the description below and you can follow along with these steps. The first thing you'll notice with the uh, file is that it downloaded it as an MP4 and what we'll have to do in order to process this is we'll have to convert it to an AVI. Now there are a, literally a ton of different uh, video file converters out there and unfortunately a lot of them have malware or viruses in them so you have to be kind of careful. Uh, I found this one that uh, was called uh, Convertilla and Convertilla actually works uh, fairly easy. Uh, all you have to do is uh, there's not a lot of, uh, of of choices in there. You just take the file and you drag and drop the, the file right to it right there and then you just say you know the formats AVI and we'll just go ahead and hit the convert button and let it convert it and then once it gets done what it will do then is it will uh, place a uh, uh, an AVI file up to download Registax. I'm using Registax 6.0 uh, there could be a possibility too that um, perhaps the uh, your Kodaks may need to be updated. So I had to update my Kodaks on mine. Anyway, we'll go and select the uh, the file, and when you select it, uh, sometimes what will happen. I noticed uh, this uh, on mine at least that sometimes it the, the won't appear right there in the picture. If that happens. Just go ahead and say open and then reopen it again and it will come up eventually. So now I'm just going to go ahead and open this up. And once it gets opened inside here, what we're going to do is we're going to want to set the align points. And the, the easiest way to set the align points is just uh, click the set align points and uh, let it go ahead and select it for you automatically go after it's done it's see all the little dots that it's put on there and that will be the align points for the uh, the image and then it's very simple you just click on the align button and what it's going to do now is it's going to go through it and align all of the uh, uh, frames on those set points to limit the uh, amount of frames that we're going to align uh, you can usually get away with I me mean, in this particular case we have uh, 1818 frames uh, let's go ahead and we'll take that down. Let's take it down to maybe the best 45% of them. And now we're oh, right in the area of about 819 frames. So what we'll do now is we'll go ahead and hit the limit button. And we can see that it's uh, done a little bit of a, uh, what we call here some uh, uh, alignment lines here on it. We'll go ahead now and we'll just hit the stack on it. When it gets done stacking, it'll come back and you'll see the results here, the stack. And right now it may not look like much, but there is a, a lot of detail here that we can still bring out. And uh, the, one of the powerful uh, parts of uh, Red Stacks is using the wavelets. So we can go into the wavelets and we can start doing these kinds of uh, sharpening tricks on it. Uh, if you kind of like click over the... Uh, the, the 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 layer level here you can see what details that it, it would sharpen up if you do a little preview of it where he goes on the layer one you can see it's really more of the finer details that it brings out and on the the sixth layer here it's really a, a very uh, larger structures now I, I don't like to get too carried away with uh, the wavelets here but maybe just a little bit on each one of them so uh, I just brought that up. Uh, that was 1.4. I'm just going to click on it one time. Uh, that brought that up just a little bit. Uh, do this one again. Uh, that's also brought up just a tad. We'll go here, bring that one up. And we'll go one more up here on the, the very fine details here. Uh, we can just, let's just say also too, let's say that we try to make it really uh, uh, exaggerated. And as you can see, when it does this it only does this little kind of like square center of it and it doesn't do all of the detail so if we do all the detail you just hit this do all button and what it will do then is it will go through the entire image and it will then apply all those wavelet features to your uh, 
image. And, you know, just with that right there, you could save it and be satisfied with that particular image. Uh, what I like to do, too, is I like to do the, uh, uh, the RGB balance, and that will help it out a little bit. I like to try this auto balance. And you can see, like, here's a, a good example of that uh, square that it just does in the center here. Uh, what we can do is, I, I it, it all depends on your taste. I mean, if you want it, you can see the, what it's, without the RGB balance, it has more of a, I guess, a gold color to it. And this gives it more of a gray, uh, gray lunar color to it. So I'm going to go ahead and hit do all on that. And it should go ahead and start bringing in the sections here. And it, it did. I mean, uh, right there, that's a, a really uh, decent image of the moon. I think what I'm going to do next, though, is I'm just going to do a little bit more uh, touch-ups in Photoshop. So what I'll do to uh, do this, I'll just hit save the image. Once in Photoshop, uh, we can do a little bit of a comparison here. I just want to uh, let you know, uh, this picture right here we're looking at is the one we just did in Registax. We applied a little bit of RGB balance and some wavelets on it. And this is... Uh, an example of a single frame uh, out of the video. So uh, just between stacking it in Registax and from a single video shot, uh, you can really tell a dramatic difference in uh, the processing on there. So uh, you don't necessarily need to bring it into Photoshop, but once you do bring it into Photoshop, then there's some other tools inside here that we can actually uh, maybe enhance the image a little bit with. And uh, again, this is kind of like all uh, personal preferences if you... Uh, light things sharper or darker or however you want to make the image but uh, uh, personally I like mine a little bit sharper uh, what I'll do is I'll go into uh, uh, filter and sharpen and I'll do a smart sharpen on here and once I get the smart sharpen screen up here you can kind of see the detail that it uh, will bring out you can play around with the, uh, the amount of sharpness and the radius and you'll know, get the kind of uh, detail that you may want. Uh, right now too you can kind of see that uh, what it's applying on the whole image right there and you can take the little preview button off and, and, and see the difference there. So uh, I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to apply this right now and uh, one thing that I like to do is uh, I like to use the layer mask and sometimes I like to bring out other areas and leave other parts like they originally the way they were. So in this particular case, what I will do is I will go to um, layer, layer mask, and I'll say hide all. And so what I've done now is uh, that sharpening, I'm going to then apply it to just uh, a little bit of the area. I'm not going to apply it to everything. So uh, let me just make a copy of the background first so we can have that there as an example to, uh, to as we go through it. So uh, what we're doing with the, the layer mask is we have this, uh, this pane right here that's a black pane covering all the sharpening details. So we'll take a paintbrush and we'll poke like a hole through the black pane to bring out the details of the sharpening below it. So uh, a white brush will poke a hole in the black pane. So let's just go ahead and uh, you can select the, uh, the brush size by any, hitting the uh, uh, the square brackets on your keyboard but I like kinda like this this detail that's right in here so let me just kinda like highlight this a little bit and uh, bring that out so y you can see right now I've just sharpened that one point without sharpening the entire image and I think that has a lot of value with the uh, the layer mask I also would like to bring out some of this detail right here I'll just go ahead and uh, apply that and we'll go through on some of these other little parts through here and apply some sharpening uh, on just some select areas that uh, I feel, uh, in my opinion, uh, look a little better. And of course you can uh, adjust this to whatever taste or preferences that you may have uh, because you know some people don't like uh, an image uh, as sharp and other people of course like it uh, a little bit sharper. So uh, that actually looks alright to me. I'm just gonna uh, see here, that I like that those, those dark details in the craters in there, I really kind of like that. Just being able to grab the uh, the dark details in those. All right, that looks good. 
All right, so uh, now that we've applied a, a layer mask, a way that we can do to blend it in to kind of make it look like, uh, you know, it's not such a hard break, we can go to filter and we can go to blur and Gaussian blur. And what we can do with this, we can back out just a little bit. Now, that's too big of a blur in my opinion, so we're going to bring it down. Uh, and, and you can see where I, I painted the uh, uh, the holes through that mask. And if you apply just a little bit of a blur to it, then what it does is it kind of blends that uh, sharpening effect and doesn't necessarily make it one uh, uh, very uh, distinct cut in the image. So uh, blend it to whatever preference you like. I, I'm just going to go ahead and take that. And what I'll do is I'll do a, a, a right click and I'll uh, merge that down on top of the layer below it. And let me just try one other thing here. I, I, I'm not sure if this is going to work or not, but uh, I like to play around a little bit. Uh, I noticed that the, the kind of the edges are a, a little bright. And let me just do this. Let me try um, image adjustment. Let's try maybe either curves or levels. Let's try curves and bring it down just a bit. And what I'm trying to do is just bring it down. Um, now that looks kind of nice. I I like the darker image like that. That that seems to uh, bring out more detail on it. But um, let's see here. Let's just bring it down a little bit more. I'm not really too concerned about the center part. Just kind of like a, looking around at the edges a little bit. I don't want to really get too close to the data there. I'm going to say OK. And now what I'll do is I'll do the exact same thing. I'll go to Layer, uh, Layer, Layer Mask, and I'll hide it all. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go for the edges on this. So I'm going to take my paintbrush and just kind of like go around the edges here a little bit. Let's just do that. Uh, you can see, you know, this was just a cheap telescope, but along the edges you can see the uh, the, the chromatic ab ab aberrations on the uh, on the side there that uh, are coming out, and uh, you'll you'll see that with uh, 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 lesser expensive telescopes. Let me go ahead and just kind of like bring that around. Okay, and now that I've got it kind of painted out there around the edges, I'm going to go to the blur and kind of blend that in. So I'll go to uh, Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur, and we'll pull that back out so we can see a little better on this. And we can see that it's uh, how it's blending there. I think I'm going to increase it just a little bit more. Let's see what this looks like. Okay, we'll try that. Say OK. And... Uh, that doesn't look too awfully bad. I mean, you could, like I say, spend your time, do whatever you want with it. Uh, let me do this. We'll do a view, and we'll view actual pixels. And, you know, for a cell phone photo, uh, this isn't a, a bad image. I mean, uh, for somebody that wants to get started in astrophotography, this is a great way to uh, get familiar with it, get uh, you know used to the tools that are used there. And it's not a very expensive uh, uh, project or hobby to you know, take pictures of the moon with your cell phone. Uh, basically, for less than a hundred bucks, you can get started. And just be be warned, uh, you know, once you get started, you might find yourself wanting to get more and more. I mean, this 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 hobby becomes addictive like that. Anyway, I, I hope you enjoyed the video, and uh, if you would like, uh, please continue to keep watching and subscribe to my uh, channel. I'd appreciate it. Thank you very much.